Okay, we are live. Welcome everyone to the Feel Inspired Podcast, episode 32. I hope I've got the number right. Um, but it has been a while since I've come to you because Clubhouse took over my life for a short period of time, although that has simmered down now. And uh, I'm back to doing my podcast and what I love doing. And today I've got an incredible guest. But before we introduce her, I just want to say thank you for being here. My name is Amit Soda, if this is your first time coming across uh, the Feel Inspired Podcast. Uh, and the idea behind this podcast was just to recreate some of the experiences I've had in my life where I've heard something or read something that's really uh, impacted me in such a positive way, in a profound way, that I, I felt inspired and wanted to go out and make some huge changes with my life. So that is the idea behind this podcast. And uh, I've had some incredible guests. And today I've got someone who's a very old friend of mine. We've known each other for a number of years. Um, but she is an incredible business coach uh, and she has got and she not not only is she a business coach, she's actually one of the things I love about her is that she's lived it. She's had businesses, sold them on uh, and she now coaches people to do the same basically as well. Expand up, up level, scale up their businesses and develop the right kind of mi mindset so that they can go on to create profitable service, you know, service led heartfelt industries, uh, businesses where they can go and impact and help other people as well. So without further ado, I'd love to uh, welcome Shilpa Panchmatia. How are you doing? Hey, thank you, Amit. What a, what a glorious introduction. It's so nice to see you again after all this time in lockdown. Oh, uh, I, I know, right? It's been, it's been, uh, what's it been since I last saw you? Uh, we met January last year, just before lockdown. So, and then you became uh, a you daddy so you disappeared from social as well <laughs> yeah. only linkedin actually like linkedin was the only one that took up uh, a lot of my time but unfortunately that's peak time for him as well so that period between sort of seven and ten uh, he's just woken up he's got all his energy he needs to be fed taken for a walk so that was that stole all my morning time away from doing my linkedin stuff with you guys so yeah um but it's uh uh we first met back in 2009 i think it was when i was in india uh i went through a particular challenge and uh, a friend a mutual friend introduced us and you were there and you and your family gave me support which i'm always forever grateful for never for, never forgotten that um uh and and yeah since then I, I since then i was well i've seen you go from strength to strength and you've kind of always wanted to reach that next echelon in your life you know push yourself a little bit further to keep developing growing uh, hitting that next milestone and you just mentioned about one of your goals for the next and you you mentioned obviously you've done your 10-year plan actually from now as well so you have this um this information there you know what you're driving yourself towards so we could discuss a little bit about that but the reason I wanted you to, to have you on today as well I think you're probably one of the first business coaches I've had on and I think that um you know people need this right now because so many more especially since covid and lockdown so many more people are uh uh you know deciding uh, and especially if they've been furloughed lost their jobs they're deciding okay great you know what maybe now's the time to completely pivot my life and go do the business that i've always wanted to do go set up the thing i've always wanted to set up and so I think this is why this particular interview I was looking forward to most uh, and is more important now than at any other time. So before f before any further ado, I would love for you to give the introduction of yourself and tell everyone about you, what it is you do, what you've done up until this point and what you're doing from here on forward as well. Yeah, thank you for that, Amit. So I'm, I'm so happy you said my name right. A number of podcasts, <laughs> to do, and they, they, they don't even mention my surname, Punch Martin, they just say Shilpa. So <laughs> I, um, I left the corporate world about 21 years ago this year and decided to branch out on myself. And it's no secret that the reason I left was that I felt that I was hitting a glass ceiling. Um, management was very hard for women, senior management. And no matter how hard I worked, how many hours I put in the office, I just couldn't seem to get past that stage of, of moving past um, that, that, that glass ceiling. It does exist. And I, I come from an entrepreneurial family. I'm fourth generation an entrepreneur. My entire family currently are in some sort of a business. And my, my parents um, ran a, a sweet shop. So I grew up talking profit and ceilings and customer service. And even though it's on a small scale, so it was very, very inbred on me. And I remember getting made redundant, um, and it was it was uh, the 1990s, and they had a little bit of a recession and some flux. And I thought, right, that's it. I'm setting up a business. And I had no idea what I wanted to do. 
And my best friend said, well, you'll need an office because in those days you couldn't sit at home and rock up a laptop and, and just start start a business. You had to have some structure behind you. So I pulled out my life savings and um, took out an office and took out some staff. I still had no business plan, by the way. And I was looking around for some something to do. I had ideas that I wanted to do something. I'd always worked in service-led businesses. And boom, my first business was born. It was a web design company. And I remember picking up yellow pages and going to local networking and, and asking them, well, can we design a website? And say, what's a website? And then you'd explain, well, here's your brochure and this is what you want to do with it. And you want to put this on the internet, everyone can see it. And you get a, get a lot of um, knockbacks. Oh, no, I don't think we want that. I don't think people use the internet because it was, of course, you know, only the early adopters that were there. And then we, we moved into e-commerce and within 18 months, we'd sold the business to a publishing house who wanted a digital platform because I had staff, I had structure, I had systems, I had processes, and I had a client base. So it was very easy for them to buy that. And it was, it was cheap, cheaper for them to buy me out because of course I didn't know the value of the business in those days. And boom, I was born, here we go, I'm an entrepreneur. <laughs> and it was, it's been an exciting and an exhilarating journey. So, and you, you've had some other businesses since then as well that you grew and then you actually sold on, right? I, I've, I've started, scaled and sold multiple businesses. And more than I've been successful, I failed. <laughs> There's so many businesses that I failed at. And it's very much the rite of passage. So when we, we share this with your audience who are perhaps looking for something new to do within lockdown, after lockdown, the pandemic, furloughed, had a sense of positiveness, had a sense of adventure and um, wanting that fulfillment that we all want. And, and most people start businesses for time and money. And um, I think it's a great opportunity. I, I truly believe that the world is full of opportunities right now, post COVID, different opportunities that we've seen before. And like with anything in life, it's, it's a question of seizing it, thinking big ideas, planning it out, but first of all, deciding that you want to do it. When you decide, everything else changes. Yeah, absolutely, right? The power of choice, the power to choose and decide and make sure you drive things forward, which I love, I absolutely love. Um, uh, and you've grown with the times, of course, with everything that's happened, with this, everything that's changed over the last, as you said, 21 years. Right? And coming from, obviously, a South Asian background, I can relate a little bit as having the shop. And funny, if you mentioned the early 90s, that's when we had, uh, or late 89, um, early 90s that's when we had a business as well a shop business that folded it was an off license uh and we didn't we didn't last i mean i was only obviously i say we i was only 12 13 at the time so 14 at the time so um but i i like to take my part in that uh, that whole thing as well but it was um it was a tricky time because that was the time when you know sunday in the uk sunday trading began um, and the demise, as a result, the demise of many local shops and businesses, whereas now often smaller shops are the ones who are thriving and actually expanding and growing. And um, prior to that as well, we used to have a laundrette when we were in Wales. Uh, and I look at laundrettes in London now, I think, oh, my God, these are absolute money makers. If we had a laundrette here in London right now, you know, they'd make, be making loads of money. So, um, yeah, no, so I'm glad to hear some of your, your journey and what you brought up to this point as well. Can, can you expand, by the way, on what you were talking about in terms of the, or what I mentioned as well, the businesses that you created and sold? Like, what were they? How did you go about? What was the process you went through to grow those business to the point where you could sell them? It's really interesting that I didn't have a process setting up and I didn't really have a process scaling and exiting. Not the process that I talk about today and I consult my clients with. I think I wrote a post about it only today, funnily enough, on LinkedIn, on how I didn't have a plan or a process, but I, I did something called persistence, consistency, created market demand, because of course in those days you didn't have Facebook ads that you just went out. You had to create that demand. You had to go and find those customers. It, in being a service-led business, people weren't coming to a, a bricks and mortar store, so it wasn't footfall, and you, you weren't sitting back waiting for people to click on ads and then come to you and sell. You had to physically actively go and find them. So that was one of the big elements, marketing. And marketing in those days was mail, mail drops and networking and, and actually a lot of cold calling. Yeah. <laughs> and maintaining relationships, that was that was phenomenal. You know, the old adage of who is it that you know and who can they introduce you to, that was quite, quite mm -hmm. massive. So the scaling process was was something that I learned. And when I was successful, 
it was very simple. Okay, I can take on more staff. I have more staff. Okay, I can sell more. I can go to more divisions. I've always been one of those people that I'm absolutely brilliant at starting businesses. I've always been in different sectors. Um, 2002, I set up a coaching business and I'd done my NLP training and I set up a, a coaching business, which was one of the very first fast track uh, accredited coaching companies in, in England. And seven years later, we got bought out by a delegate who wanted to lead the rat race of, of the central of London um, IT. So the, the, the thinking behind what I did always was um, be very consistent, be very productive, create a market and a product that you want to sell, that people want to buy, and always be ahead of your game. And they were the sorts of the elements that allowed me to, to expand, um, go into new markets, new countries. And at that time, the internet started coming about. So we were using Google Ads to fill places on courses, for example. And marketing has changed. And I think that's been, been phenomenal in the way that the whole business model has changed because no, no time in the history of marketing have we been able to be so laser focused with reaching our clients? So it's a totally different minefield uh, business today. So what are you? What what's different to what you were doing in your coaching business back then that you're doing t different to what you're doing right now as well? What's 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 different for you? What made you decide to sell one business but then go back into the coaching industry again uh, and continue? Yeah, really good question. So I coached, I was a business coach, I was a technical business coach, more life coaching in those days. Coaching was totally new. Thomas Leonard invented it sort of late 1990s and he was discussing it. And I was just fascinated with this aspect of personal growth that you could actually support people to make changes. And like any anybody, I wanted the changes myself. You know, I was looking for change within myself. I wanted to be successful. I wanted to speak better. I wanted to talk in public. I wanted to manage my mind better. And that's what drew me to coaching and, and NLP with that hypnosis and all the other modalities that come with it. And then I went on to run different businesses um, in web applications. And I ran a digital agency for many years. And it was only when I burnt out a few years ago when I exited my digital agency that I thought, okay, well, maybe I'll just retire and consult a little bit. But I found myself drawn to just helping people again and supporting them. And it was quite natural that many businesses just came to me organically and said, sure, but can you help me with this? I've got a problem here because of the network that I had. And before I knew it, even without having a website or having done any ads, I had 10 clients. So it was kind of a calling that found me rather than me go out and say, well, I'll, I'll set this up again. I want to sit on the beach, I'm here and retire. <laughs> well you you technically could right now right because you just you, you're actually in a good place plus you could always just do all of this online right it's phenomenal isn't it the opportunities we have today in life are fantastic for starting businesses growing businesses and more so um the variety of businesses that are available there, mm. there's so much segmentation in the marketplace that find your passion and then follow it create a business around it and that sort of dovetails with what people talk about a lot at the moment and very, very popularly, your ikigai, which is follow your bliss, find your bliss. Life, I think, has changed and people certainly want more empowerment and happiness, contentment and fulfillment in their life. They don't just want to run businesses, make a whole a load of money and not have a life with it. They want to have the experiences and, and run both in tandem. Abs absolutely right you know that's so so true right i think i i think the mindset has completely changed in the last 20 years i think that with like you said the advent of the internet where possibilities weren't there before that people are seeing opportunities to do things which they never previously thought possible and that's what it's all about right we were uh, we were joking off air for anyone watching right now we we're joking off air just a little bit about clubhouse and um obviously it's a uh, it's a relatively new social media platform. And, you know, I, I think it is very powerful, extremely powerful, in fact, more powerful than most of the other social media is put together in many ways, because uh, even the people that I met, the connections I made, I never made over, you know, two years, five years, 10 years on social media. And I've connected with, you know, 20 people that I could potentially work with over the next five years if I wanted to. Um, so I think the scope there is unlimited, but even more so with just, having an internet, having a website, having the internet, having a website, having the ability to 
so easily market your business, put it out there, connect with people, have messages spread, create viral videos, viral content. All of these opportunities now exist, right? Which weren't there before. But yours was gone. Yeah, I, I, I just don't think that businesses even need a website today. Many businesses yeah. come just from an Instagram account, um, putting out content and showing your authenticity and your wares. And it's very easy today. Just, just set up a business and whatever you want to do. Do you know, I said exactly the same to someone today. It's actually my local chippy, lovely guy. We sometimes order from there and, you know, he's just getting started on Instagram and he doesn't even know how to post a story or anything yet. And I said to him, just pop around 10 minutes. I'll show you everything you need to know. And you don't need to know everything. Trust me. I said, look, I've been in IT for, I was in IT for 20 plus years myself as well. So I know it in, I know things inside out, but every day there's something more or new to learn. Right. So I just said, just find out what you need to know and use those tools and you'll be absolutely fine. You don't need a website, you don't need a Facebook page, you just need a good, good idea of being a bit, a little bit creative and just knowing yeah. how to use the basics in the tool, you'll be fine. Um, that's but that's so, mm. you, you talk, you, you call this, I think, business secrets. And I think that is actually the secret of business change. Embrace it, really completely, totally embrace it. Don't be scared of it and use it in your life and your business to be successful. I think that's really the key, change. Absolutely. We underestimate change. Yeah, oh, hell yeah, hell yeah, <laughs> we do. So let's let's uh, let's talk a little bit about your kind of business growth tips and secrets and stuff. So let's start delving in a little bit deeper. So I know you are already connected, but there is nothing that is a given. So, I, and I know as well that you, when this coaching side, this the, the more recent coaching began, it wasn't part of a plan, but it has become, and you still have to do the legwork, put in the work, do, do your due diligence, do your marketing to attract new clients, attract new people. So what are you doing now that, um, I guess, one, that you weren't doing before, uh, and two, what are you taking away and learning through this process of growing up, growing and scaling up your business from this point at the moment? Uh, so share some of your secrets. What are you taking away from all the things that you're doing, all the activities that you're doing? Yeah, I think one thing that I've learned um, in, in digital marketing and running a business in today's day and age is this word I've used already twice is consistency, is showing up and having a regular marketing plan that you stick to, that you embrace, and you monitor. And also, a lot of people are very good at marketing and pumping out lots of information. We've got so many opportunity, opportunities here of different channels, different types of content, different types of blogs. And we've got social audio now, which is a game changer, because no longer can you hide behind posts that maybe your digital team made for you. It's you. It's there. But I have heard, Amit, that people are sending in imposters to support you you know I have, have heard that that club has too so so the consistency is really important having a plan of action of where you want to be do you want to grow your business to x amount in a year how are you going to get there what is your roadmap and what areas do you need to focus on do you need a team do you need systems do you need structure and we've got so many apps and project management tools and it's a game changer for businesses because all, all of a sudden you can find a way if you're a business owner to automate your business to a certain stage where you don't have to be there, take yourself away from the business. And it's so liberating when that happens. It's scary because as a business owner, you've probably grown your business and all of a sudden they don't need you. It's all working. But I think that's a testament to a good business because often people want some form of an exit. And if an exit is a sale, then you're halfway there in getting there. Mm. Recruitment tends to be really challenging for a lot of, lot of people. So learning about recruitment and having the systems and structures to attract the right talent and talent that you know that's going to stay because longevity and cutting out that churn is important. So the other thing that you need to do as a business owner is, is create a culture. Some of these things are not really applicable to me. I know you asked me, what are you doing? I'm not scaling my business so much. It's my, my coaching business is very much a lifestyle business. I have a small team to look after my digital content and my admin and service my clients. But the majority of work is, is done by me with my clients. And that's, that's exactly how I want it. You know, I, I want that, that work-life balance now. Yeah, so they're, so they're the key elements. So what are you coaching out of all the, the clients that you were getting and the people who are asking for your help with their business? What are, I know you mentioned one already, but what are some of the challenges and some of the solutions or um, 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 
not not solutions so much actually but what are you guiding them on what are the things that you feel that are preventing people from you know growing a business building it you know uh, obviously you mentioned consistency and persistency but uh, oh there's a there's a new word um but what else is there there's got to be there's got to be more to it than that come on Shilpa, it can't be that simple I, I come on <laughs> so many business owners and they all struggle with getting to a certain stage so they've done well in their business often that that's the, the target market that i work with they they've got a proven business concept they they've turned over 751 million and then getting past that million often they say getting from one to ten is really really quite quite tough so as i said it's it's creating those systems actually understanding first of all the mindset what's the why what's the purpose why do they want to do this business and where do they want to take it having a roadmap and having that clarity and strategy in place is really firstly fundamental and, and and then breaking it all down so we've talked about all the different areas that i sit and support them and look at and it is quite simple actually there is this little formula so if you've got a market that people want to have a product or service that people want to buy there's demand for it then you just need to have a business that supports that demand and making sure that your business has strong foundations in those areas and growing it. And that's fundamentally the work that, work that I do in, in supporting them with. Um, they, they, they they, I find that most businesses get, get stuck and then it's working through how badly they want it because it ain't no secret. There's a lot of work to running a business and, and scaling and growing and, and, and lots of hours. But how do you manage a business and set up a business that you're not killing yourself? You, you have delegated your work. Often the owner needs a lot of support get into that stage and depending on where they are in their business journey have they learned to get productive efficient delegate are their systems and their business set up properly and that that's quite pretty awesome sometimes and helps them quite far so talk more about, about the change yeah talk more about these systems then what what like you mentioned right so if you you could be someone who's yeah you know, let's use two examples because uh, let's let's try and connect with a few people here as well so you might have people who are really just you know starting out maybe even they've just reached five figures maybe they're making 10k a year and this is the, just the genesis of their business and they're just starting out and it's just starting to grow a little bit and they want to get to say six figures right they want to get to 100k and then you've mentioned as well the um level of entrepreneur or business person that you work with and they're at say for example you know 500k to a million but they want to get to that next echelon of you know 10 million so what systems do they need what do they need to do uh, and i know let's delve into the mindset thing as well what do they need to do then to be able to kind of break those ceilings and get past these you know self self-limiting perceived you know self what's the word i'm looking for you know what i mean you know what i mean like self-created barriers that they've 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 you know put in put it in built into themselves that's a real good place to start mindset mindset is just so 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 important for entrepreneurs we un underestimated and many entrepreneurs i i work with say to me yeah, it's great. I've got my business, but I've got a bit of imposter syndrome. So it, it's finding what your challenges are, working with them and being really self-assured and focused and saying, no, I'm going to do this. This is how I'm going to do it. And being gentle with yourself at the same time. Once you have a plan, it's very easy to work backwards and work out what it is you want to do. And the systems and processes that I, I, I talk about are if you're a service led business, have you got a system for onboarding a client, for example? Have you got a system for delivery, for example? And have you put it all into a format and um, a, a spreadsheet? And if, if, you, if you were to die tomorrow or you were taken ill and you had COVID, does your business stop? Have you got a contingency plan? So ha having some of the nuts and bolts in the business really help you define a business and have some longevity and a contingency at the same time. With your larger businesses, it's, it's, it's just on a different scale. How systemized is your business? How, how can the flow of work go seamlessly through your team without there being problems, communications? And you know what happens in business, endless meetings. How do you do that? And they're the, some of the things that we, we work with to, to move that business forward. Yeah. So give us a tangible example then. You got you, like you said, right, you can get so lost in some of the, you know, the day to day uh, grind, right? Just constant meetings being pulled in this direction, that direction. How does one get focused and get kind of 
streamlined so that they they t they're doing the things that are necessary and important and like i i the, the, i um i just finished or finished listening to an audio book which is the one thing i don't know if you've ever come across it oh, it's a really book. good one yeah, yeah love, let's, i love let's it let's talk about that book I, I i implement a lot of systems like that with people productivity is one of the biggest things that that, yeah. that, that, that matters to people and yeah. um I and managing that productivity is is essential. Um, yeah. Leadership. How do leaders manage their productivity? Because look, get this: yeah. if they're productive, then their businesses are going to be productive, their teams are going to be productive, and you've got a culture of not firefighting, but actually getting through your to-do list, getting through your plans, and getting to your mm. quarter end, and saying actually we've achieved our objectives. I, I like the one thing because they they teach you focus. They, they teach you how to evaluate what the most important things they are. And I, I like, the way I run my business and my mind is, is the three, three sections, do it, delegate it, or ditch it. Don't have mm. endless, endless lists that you work like with. That. Once like you've that. got your productivity set up, it's easy for you to work with a team. It's easy for you to manage that team and really work outside of your business and focus on it as opposed to being inside and firefighting and, and you know, delivering the products because your delivery driver's out or um, talking to customers because they're upset. You've got people in place to do that and systems and structures so that all those things are taken care of and great for learning when you're scaling. So if we're talking about a business just started and they're, they're, they're doing 10,000 pounds a year, then great for them to understand systems and What's their, their customer relationship system like? How are they putting people onto some sort of CRM? Which is great for them because guess what? Come another six months, 12 months time, they can get in contact with these valuable contacts that have bought for them or shared some experience with them or interest in them and, and remarket to them. I mean, they're gems of business and that's money on the table, I always think, when people don't do that. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and you know, that that book as well, I think going, going back to the point about the book as well, I think even just that one simple statement or question can be so powerful. Just saying to yourself, what is the one thing I need to accomplish today in order to fulfill, feel fulfilled or feel like I've done something or achieved something? I mean, even that in itself, I thought, wow, that's a, it's such a no brainer. But yet it is such, uh, you know, not often you know most people just don't think of that or think of that statement or wording it in such a way of just being able to just do at least one thing in the whole day i have days as well where i just get absolutely nothing done right you know especially with the puppy now and today i had a build around and then you know trying to keep the puppy under control and do this that the other stuff for the house and whatnot and you know i have to admit right so i thought to myself today right my one thing is to get this bloody podcast with Chopin done and I'll, i will feel oh, quite good <laughs> you know that um, one thing is so so essential for business owners yeah you know entrepreneurs they have a hundred million ideas on the go and many entrepreneurs i speak with they've got five businesses going but mm. focus on one make that one successful automate it extract yourself from the business have it as a cash cow and then start your second business i'm a big fan of that i i, I spend a lot of time coaching around please let's just do one thing and let's understand the value the outputs and the deliverables from doing one thing yeah i i'm so with you on that as well so <laughs> with you on that i could i couldn't agree with you more um yeah so um i had another question in my my head and it's just kind of completely gone out of my head, but we'll come back to that. Um, because we're talking obviously about mindset. By the way, for anyone watching this as well, if you've got any questions for Shopa, feel free to ask. Um, now is the time to get some free coaching as well, which otherwise you probably would have to pay a lot of money for. So now is the time to do it. Um, but yeah, the mindset thing as well. So understanding and um because it, it does come down to that initial stage of awareness, right? And understanding and accepting, holy, hang on a minute, maybe I am spreading myself a bit too thin. Maybe I am unfocused. Maybe I'm not getting the, the important things done. And I need to, you know, reevaluate my priorities, get productive and get the actual things that I need to do, need to do done um and um what well, I, I know what i was going to ask you now as well in fact it just came back to me now so this is regarding so people who are relatively new to business and they've just started a business or they've been at it for you know a short period of time now we all know as business owners we're going to make a hell of a lot of mistakes right um 
uh, and a lot of people along that journey. So I guess this is a bit of a two prong question. So firstly, it's about how do we cope with the, the mistakes and, you know, what uh, what can we do about them when they do occur? Because I think, you know, because the worst thing is that, like you said, imposter syndrome, beating yourself up, just feeling like, oh, God, do I give this up now? Or is this the end of my life? But also, obviously, this whole concept of then pivoting and not being if you realize something is crap and it's not working, then, you know, you know, what's your advice to people who are kind of like, you know, do I stick at this one thing or do I actually change what I'm doing? Because, you know, it could be that maybe they just haven't been at it long enough or maybe they need to do just one thing. Uh, and this is one of the things I hear often is the confusion that people experience. Right. Do I continue? Do I not? Do I pivot? Do I change one thing? Do I adjust? And like, you know, I think there's so much of that that people plow their energy to and they're exhausted just on that one thing. But so you've got two two things there, mainly, obviously, how do you address your mistakes? And what do you do if something is not working? How do you know what to do next? You're a really, really gold, gold, because I didn't know this in my in my journey, but failure is so exciting and important because that's really where you learn. Uh huh. I hear people say, yeah, OK, you've been there and you've done it and you failed. Um, but the lessons that you learn from not doing it correctly actually come back. It's like the feedback loop. There's no such thing as failure. It's only just feedback because you're refining and coming back. So mm. I really encourage people to fail and I encourage them to embrace that failure. I also think failure is part of the rites of passage for success in business. And um, to the extent that I think we should have failure parties, why, why are we not looking at it differently? Have I lost you there, Amit? Let's hope I get you back. Am I you back? I'm back. Yeah, I lost you yeah. there. I think that maybe me, potentially. Let's try and just okay, move my here. laptop this way. There we go. <laughs> okay, hopefully that's a little bit better. Carry on. So the rites of passage and, and embrace it. Have a failure party. Why not? Why do we feel negatively? Oh, I failed. I didn't do it properly. I spent this much money in my business and I didn't get it right. Yeah, brilliant. You've learned so much value. Plow it back in. Plow it back in and make your business really different and better. You know, I, I always remember Edison's quote. He said, you know, I found 10,000 ways that I could make it better. Is that the right quote? Yes, it is. Or it's 10,000 just, ways that didn't work or something like didn't that, Didn't right? work, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. A, I found 10,000 ways it didn't work, so I got one way it did work. Really, really valuable and, 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 and precious when you have that approach and that thought process and, and that ethos in life that I am going to fail in business. Let's see where I fail. Let me take those learnings and make a business that's successful. Because it's, it's not an easy road. It's not an easy road to, to be successful in business. Um, it takes a lot of perseverance, a lot of knowledge, and getting that idea and then moving towards it sequentially. And talking about people that perhaps in business and haven't refined their message, nothing wrong with it. First of all, evaluate really clearly if there is a market for their demand. A market for that product or service is there demand for it so many business owners that i speak to haven't actually ascertained if their product or their service is needed they have an idea oh well i'm, I'm going to develop this beauty product and i'm going to put it out in the marketplace because guess what i see it on instagram and everyone's using this type of makeup for this type of skin so i'll de i'll develop it but have you done your market research? Have you started with your desk research? Have you spoken to a, a large enough representative number of people and, and worked out that, yes, that people will buy this? And then have you created enough of a brand, channels, thoughts, um, and, and really made sure that people will buy your, your product and then created a product or a service with minimum investment to test out in the marketplace? Because once you have clients you know that there's a demand for your product it's easier then to refine and move it forward and grow more successful in that and i think i think that's really where people go when people get confused i think we live in a, an environment a world where there's so much support um, in my days i never had coaches or business mastermind groups today we've got so much support for business 
that don't feel alone and don't be scared to ask. It's okay. It's okay to say, please help me. What do you think about this? Abs absolutely right. You said it, you hit the nail on the head there, that there is so much out there information, even on the web. And although there is some rubbish information out there, generally speaking, there's a lot of good information out there, actually. And people are willing to give that away information away for free if you just do a little bit of research. Um, I don't know about you. One of my favorite people to follow online is Simon Sinek. I absolutely adore Simon Sinek. He's one of my absolute favorite speakers and favorite authors uh, in the personal development space. Uh, and you just look at his material and it just gives you so much insight into the way people think, the way people operate, what you need to consider for your business, the message, the why you're sending out. Um, and so if you would just pick up a good book, a really good book, you would take on and learn so much from that individual that you could just, but you again, it's, it comes down to that whole idea that you, you you read this book and you're, you're fascinated by it, you're inspired by it, but do you do it? It's great to be inspired, but then you've got to act. I was just going to say that, that so many of us read so many books, but very little execution and implementation. Mm -hmm. And there seems to be this real sort of um, success principle that I read seven books in a day and, and it's a race to read books. That knowledge is just essential and, and really, really powerful. And I, I think it's fantastic when people read those books because you've got to keep learning. You've got to never stop learning. But if you only read one book a year, but absolutely completely implement what you learn in that book because it's the practicalities of it, doing it, that are going to get you that business success. I think that's key. Um, I, I've, cut, I've cut down the number of books that I read because it gives me too much information in my head which doesn't allow me to really absorb and distill and apply what I learn because because I really think that's the key. One thing. Yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> the, one, the one thing. Yeah, we're right back to that point as well. Yeah, no, 100%. I, I'm so with you on that one as well, that you need to kind of give yourself term to actually absorb what you're reading as well and put it into practice. But it is that, isn't it? Like it's, you could, you could read 100 books, but if you, if you don't actually take anything and use it, but if you read one book and you find something useful, whether it's the one thing or any other one, but if you can just take that one message um, and apply it into exactly what you're doing. You know, for me, it might be the dating space, and I decide, okay, great. You know, I I know there's always going to be demand for my product, but what is that product, and why why is it even there? Right? Why do people need this? What is it? What is the problem that I'm trying to solve for people? You know, the, even I'm coaching this 14 uh, year old boy actually, who's very entrepreneurial minded, and um, we're creating a business plan plan for him right now and it's wonderful to see that this is you know he he wants to do this you know he's really into his computer code he wants to um you know create his own business he's unlike his younger brother who i also coach who's really into sports want to be wants to be a sports superstar um but we were just talking about this this idea of what is the problem you were trying to solve and even if you could just do that one thing, then then that will help you. But like you said, you can have a great idea, but if it's not solving anyone's problem, then to be honest, it isn't really going to be that useful, right? Would you agree? So essential, so essential. Find out what the problems are that you're solving because that's the key. And that's when people buy your services. Yeah, it's absolutely. It's a great, great lesson for, for him to learn. And isn't it wonderful how how we have so much support for entrepreneurs and these books about how to raise entrepreneurial kids, because I do think it's having a different mindset. It's having that curiosity. It's having a little bit of fear, fearlessness, and a little bit of get up and go that you just get up and you just do it. Because when you think about it too much and you put too many plans and ideas across, it often doesn't happen. And certainly in the entrepreneurs that I've worked with, I've seen there's a big element of, let me just try it. Let me just test it out. And it's that testing process that enables them to either succeed or fail. But there's no emotion to either. Mm. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And Chuck, sure, I was going to ask you, right? So with regards to what, like, at the end of the day, I mean, we've actually, in fact, we've, I've skipped over a really important question. Why does a business even need to grow? What, what's the purpose of that? Why, if someone's earning, you know, you know, 50 grand a year through their business and they're happy with that, do they need to grow? It's really down to the individual. Um, we come into a stage in business, the business um, climate, the business structure has changed. You, you wouldn't have this 20 years ago. 
um, micro businesses working from home, supporting themselves, earning 20, 20 grand. And there was always a massive cost attached to running a business. Um, and there were different, different processes and structures and marketing was, was massively different. So when you ran a business, you often want and you often wanted to have an exit to that. That were you just going to were you going to sell it? Were you going to let your, your, your staff buy it? What, what was it? Today it may be, well, look, you know, I've got an income and that's that's all I want. I'm happy with it. It doesn't have to grow. And that's that's absolutely fine too. And many people are doing that, and especially when they're following their passion and and often their purpose, they're really happy with it. Mm. Uh, yeah, I agree. And obviously, we've got the, the whole gig economy. We've got um, people traveling while they work, freelancing, just working, literally taking a laptop around with them around the world and just working from that. And that is their business, you know, whether it's coaching, whether it's uh, being ghost writers, writing articles, doing social media for people or um, doing their, their, their business advertising on Facebook and Google and all the rest of the platforms there are so many options right now uh i i, I don't suppose are you on tiktok by any chance Shilpa? i would imagine not i'm too i'm too old for tiktok i used to think i was too old for instagram as well but i've got <laughs> over that limiting belief now i'm just about to do my reels <laughs> <laughs> i love it can't wait to watch it what do you mean you're too old for instagram what kind <laughs> of mindset is that come yeah, on i know i know i know look i'm allowed but i, I used to think because it was full of kids it's changed yeah it's instagram's only in the last two three years has it become really popular with business owners but it never was it was it was full of instagrammers who had pretty pictures and the rich kids and that's really its origins isn't it yeah and it's it's great how these channels are all changing and businesses are embracing them and you have an opportunity to share proper content and information and inspire educate and empower and i think that's fabulous that that we can all do that What's what are you gonna? I'm curious now. What are you gonna put on your reel? What's on your next reel? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> I've been watching all these reels and I see all these women dancing along and then doing all of this, and I thought oh, this will be exciting. <laughs> it's, it's fun though, right? It's fun. It's fun. It is. That's, that's the bit I like about it. It's no longer serious business. It's it, you can learn while you're having fun. You listen to music. You've got different dimensions coming at you, and, and it, it's it's phenomenal. It never used to be like this. Remember. Yeah, I, I, I'm actually having a lot of fun with TikTok because I, I first downloaded it at the beginning of lockdown and uh, I did a few fun videos with it, you know, like maybe six, seven, and then I gave up and I never really touched it again. And then in the last two weeks, I've really got addicted to it. Not when I say addicted to it, I, I could see the potential there. And it is, a, it is a lot of fun, actually, as well. But I could see the real potential of, uh, like, I think it's much easier to go viral on TikTok, say, than, for example, Instagram. And so... If you're so, I've been doing some experiments over the last sort of week, week and a half, been putting out some content, and you can do this facility where you you can stitch with another video, and yeah. so this video might have already had like three, you know, five million views or something like that. You just stitch yourself listening to this video, right? And of course, you know the content is great because people have been sharing it, and so you don't actually have to do anything. You could just I, I did one just now. It was a video by. Um, uh, what's his name? Sorry, uh, the Tony Stark. What's his name? What's his name? Um, uh, my mind's gone blank. You know who I mean, the Iron Man, right? I forgot. My, Robert Downey Jr., right? So he's a, he's in this video just sharing some really nice, powerful words. And I just stitched myself with this video, just smiling along and just that that's that's it, right? And I did another one of these the other day and I don't have hardly any followers on there. But yeah, I had 100 likes and I was like, oh my God, this wow. is quite easy, right? So I thought, let me see if I can experiment this and and use it. Uh, as part of my business growth strategy and stuff. And so, yeah. um, so I think, again, the option wasn't there five years ago, 10 years ago, um, but it's so easy just to get a bit creative and who knows what could happen, right? Who could find you? Who could discover your business? What it is you're, you're selling your product? Um, I can ask you a few, right? So a few other things as well, I think are really important about business in general and business growth, right? So what do you think of this idea that selling is service? Brilliant. Brilliant. Do things with your heart, do it with your purpose and, and make people's lives be better and healthier and happier. It's fabulous. Fabulous way to be in a fabulous way to live your business life. Being I like that. Towards. Yeah. Great answer. Great answer. I like that. Uh, what do you think uh, to those people who say, I can't really sell anything? 
It's interesting because it's just a mindset. And I don't think selling is like it was before. You know, you'd get a knock on the door and someone would come and sell you a double glazing package or encyclopedias or you'd you'd get a cold call from someone. It's so consultative now and it's so authentic, I feel, really, that there's a lot of conversation. There's a lot of you have the opportunity. I think you're sold all the time on social media anyway. So when you go to buy, that person is already in your mindset so when a person says i can't sell if they are going through what sometimes i think they say there's seven touch points and they've got a piece of content and they've got a video and then they've got this they've actually sold to their buyer even before they think they're selling mm. do you I agree like with that, that? what's your view on uh, that? yeah I actually 100% do. I think it's really important because, like, I don't go around there. It's not like you go to someone these day, in this day and age and you say, right, would you like life coaching? <laughs> yeah, that doesn't happen, right? Uh, and often as often I speak to people, like, even today, just today, I messaged someone and they wanted coaching for dating. And I said to them, look, I've got to be honest. I'm not sure you're the right client for me. <laughs> um, they're, they're a lovely person, but I'm not sure. I, I'm, I'm just not sure that I'm the right person for them. Uh, and I'd rather be clear and upfront. And it's great. Actually, I spoke to like we're trying to find a really good dog trainer. And it's so easy. You just call someone and then receive your call like, yes, yes, I'll, I'll do anything you say. And I spoke to one the other day and he was like, I, I'm, I, can't, I can't do what you're asking. And he was like, I'm really, I'm really sorry. Now, you, you could genuinely tell in his voice he was genuinely sorry. I was like, don't be sorry. I, I was just so grateful he was honest with me that I didn't end up paying him, you know, three, 400 quid and him not doing any of the stuff we've asked for. So I was so great. And I try and live with that honesty. If someone comes to me and I, I just genuinely don't think I can help them, then I won't. I won't sell my coach, try and sell my coaching package. Listen, this is what I do. If you feel that I'm the right person for you to help you on your journey, great, pay me. And when people say, but hang on, this is coaching. Why should I pay you for coaching? Okay, <laughs> we're not even going to get into that discussion right now. That happens way too often. But look, this is how much I charge. If you want it, great. There you go. If you don't, it's completely okay. I don't want, I, I just, I don't know about you, but I'm not one of these people. I could say I have to force sell you. You know, I have to try and try and sell you. I don't, I don't work like that. I, I don't think I will ever work like that. I, I want people have sold to, anything in years yeah i want people to come to me because yeah because they know my product and they, yeah and they know what they're getting uh and i don't know if that's the right mindset or not but I, that's what i feel is right for me and that's the way i'm going to continue to do what i do so that's yeah so i i agree with you wholeheartedly on that point and that's the way i see it in addition to that as well so um yeah, because again, the reason I ask that though is because I hear so many people say that, you know, and I think that that the image that they get in their head when as soon as you're saying talk about selling is that old school mindset, you know, picking up a mm -hmm. doing a cold call, trying to get someone to buy some shit that they don't need type of thing, you know, like toner. And I was th think of that episode of Friends with Phoebe and selling the toner type of thing, right? <laughs> and it's you know, it's not that anymore. Um, when people want your service, they'll come, they'll come to you anyway. It's a, I, I actually, I'm a little, I know a lot of uh, gurus don't don't ascribe to this at all, but that whole, you know, if you build it, they will come. If you've got a good product, people will find you if you just all you've got to know how to do is put it out there with the modern day tools if you know how to put yourself out there and use tools like social media instagram google ads or just pay someone to do a good google ad for you they will find you if you've got the right kind of product and you know how to just word it you don't really need to sell it it's just that you've got to be able to effectively communicate that you are solving the problem that they have that's the way i see it so that's for me is how i describe that word you know what I mean? Hundred percent, hundred percent. I think I just want to add to that that people have so many opportunities to buy today that mm. we don't actually have to sell. I mean, I can't remember the last time I went to a shop looking for something. I will go on Google and I will read a review, and I think that's one of the reasons that perhaps businesses we talked about snake oil salesmen. Um, I think businesses have become more authentic and honest because they know that everything's run by reviews. Mm. And if you don't have a good experience, you're going to probably write a bad review. So it's really important that we give the best service and work our hardest to make sure that we keep people happy and give them a top notch service. And, and I think business just keeps going. I, I don't find business difficult at all. Yeah. Uh, just on a side note to that, right, as well. Are you finding since COVID, because I was having this debate with some friends of mine recently, the service since COVID has kind of gone a bit downhill uh, uh, with anything in particular? Are you finally not finding that? 
I haven't been anywhere to experience it. <laughs> <laughs> Bedroom, living room, conservatory, garden. <laughs> um, I, I, I think in England, the, the service levels in hospitality can be quite quite poor um, compared to across the pond. And this, we talked about service and 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 giving work and giving services is is is, is a lovely feeling. And I feel that sometimes lacks in this country. And I'd love to see better service levels in in hospitality and generally in business. I mean, my big bugbear is, um, is is when you ask for someone to give you some support, um, you want to hire a supplier, um, the turnaround time is really, really long. I, I don't get it. I come from a time where if you had a hot lead, you're on the phone within the next 20, 24 hours, and otherwise that lead would go cold. But sometimes mm. suppliers don't react. And I just think, well, you're just leaving money on the table. I can't understand that mentality. Oh, I agree with that as well. I had, I had another experience in that recently as well. I, I'm such a mass consumer right now as well. I'm going through all these experiences. But it's great because it's teaching me like about me and what I don't want to do in my business as well. Don't get me wrong. I have bad days where someone says to me, can you get back to me? And it just, you know, even if I've written it down, it sometimes just slips in my mind to actually do it. Um, uh, and that happens once in a while. But you know, I, I just I, the way the way I see some companies act and smaller businesses and how people act. I do it surprises me that they're still in business. I have to admit. Um, yeah. So um, okay, cool. Circling back anyway to to our key theme here, which is about business growth secrets and um, understanding that if you're someone, whatever stage you're at, whether you're just beginning or even the idea is just a concept to you right now, but the idea is you want to create, scale up, build a business and make it something that is paying you well so that you can enjoy life as well. Not overdoing it, not killing yourself. So I want you to share with me, Shilpa, kind of like your top sort of three to five tips for someone who's whatever stage they're at, they want a business, they want to grow it so that they can enjoy their lives, make good money. And live a fulfilled, happy life, do service. What are your top tips? First of all, I think it's it's quite easy to attain all of that. So have the mindset that it's it's not difficult, it's it's quite simple. Because we are bombarded with content and information and don't listen to everything on Google. It, it I really believe that we need to get comfortable doing what we're doing. Be the best that you can be. Know your product, know your service, know your market, and deliver the best that you can de deliver. Bit of a paradox here. Once you've got comfortable doing that, get uncomfortable, find that change. Because it's in that change and that refinement and that, that progression that true excellence comes. And that's really what we're talking about, getting to the level of excellence. Um, I also think along that, always find that you've got some new skills. Because with that learning, you're again implementing it. If you look at the world's best com com um, companies, what have they done? They've got something new, they've got something different, and then they've, they've disrupted if they have. Not that you've got to disrupt to be successful and have a, a good, good business like you've described, um, but they've consistently been the best of it. And they've created a service level that people start talking about. Create that for yourselves, no matter how small your business is. And with that, you get lots of word of mouth marketing, and that is just, just so, so important. With that, I think always get bigger, bigger ideas. Why are you staying with one product line? Why are you staying with one service offering or one market segment? Get bigger ideas, think bigger, think think higher and, and go and do it. Don't, don't hold yourself back. Um, alongside that, I find a lot of smaller business owners underestimate their value and their worth. So really get comfortable with what you're worth value yourself really truly value yourself your experience your education if you have any your skills all the things you've learned everything that you've invested in getting to the stage you are in this business I and mean, if you look at you and me um uh, i mean we've probably spent thousands on, on on personal development and learning and courses and 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 information and <clears throat> even amongst us you know in our coaches masterminds we're constantly sharing innovation and new strategies I mean, that, that's a big investment in us that we're giving to other people. So w whatever your business is, value it and charge accordingly. And I, I think that, that those, those five uh, core tips are quite important to allow a business to just achieve that level of success, 
steady growth and level of comfort to have a nice income and a happy, happy life with it. That's right. Do you ever have a day where you're just like, why am I doing this? Oh yeah, yeah, I think it's quite normal. And I just sit under the duvet. I like nature, I go for long walks. Um, I cancel some of my appointments if I can. And I just go within and I try and find my joy because that's life. It doesn't matter if you're a business owner or not, that's just life. But get in touch with your with your joy. And one thing that I've learned through our time together, Amit, is, is having a very rigor, rigorous routine. Um, so I have a very strict routine. We're both in the 5 a.m. club. And that really helps me set my mindset up to get into this structure, uh, which means that when I go to hotels, I still make my bed because guess what? If I don't make my bed, then the rest of my routine goes to pot and I just feel disorientated. Uh, I, I, I have a meditation practice. I have a yoga practice. And that gives me my sense of purpose, my sense of what I'm here for. And I can look back at the year gone and think, God, I've wasted so much of my time and days, but I've also been productive and achieved what I want to achieve. Because I think having structure, processes, and, and goals is going to give you a life that you want to live. There's nothing wrong with not, not having so much structure. Just saying, look, I'll live my life how it is and be happy with it. It's, it's what do you want? Be very clear on what you want to achieve. <coughs> Once you have that clarity, it's all okay. Yeah. I, I love that. That's some beautiful, beautiful wisdom there. And we've had some uh, amazing sound bites as well, which I will extract from uh, all of this. Um, uh, and I guess my last question to you is, is, uh, is there anything else important you think we missed that you want to share with everyone, especially anyone in the business space and the entrepreneurs out there, um, perhaps going through any particular challenges, especially with everything going on in the world right now? What, what's uh, what's the, the one thing or two things that you want to share yeah, with everyone? Yeah, so... So my one thing that I've learned recently um, is to detox digitally. Live your life, some of it, for me, it's often weekends where you're not connected to your phones, computers, and you have time to be with the flow of life. Find a rhythm that supports you and allows you to live your life with harmony. We all talk of work-life balance. But our lives today are Slack messages going off at nine o'clock, expectations for emails answered in three hours, four hours. But it's hard for us as human beings. And many of us are still going to have this hybrid hybrid lifestyle where we're going to be working from home, from home working with our families. Um, and it's different, but embrace it because I, I think that's where the joy and the flow of life is. Just really embrace it and be kind to yourself and allow yourself to detach and and find your own rhythm in your in your soul that's beautiful advice and i think that's a good way to wrap things up Shilpa, as well so uh last but not least where can people reach out to you if they want to hire you as their coach uh what is the best way that they can reach out to you connect with you and find out about how you could serve them yeah thanks for that amit um i'm very easy to find there's only one Shilpa punchmata in the world my website is shilpa-p.com. That's S-H-I-L-P-A-P.com. And all my socials, Clubhouse, Instagram, Twitter, Shilpa TV. And I'm launching a new mastermind, which is a safe space for business owners to come together. So if anyone's interested in, in finding more about it, please get in touch. And the only other thing I do is my VIP coaching. And I'd, I'd welcome a conversation with anyone interested. And thank you for having me. It's been so lovely to speak to you. It's been lovely speaking to you as well. Thank you. And hopefully I will have you again, uh, not have you, but have you back on the <laughs> podcast again in the future um, to discuss more in-depth business uh, strategies and building and growing and um, all of these beautiful subjects around uh, entrepreneurship and uh, business mindset as well so thank you so much Shilpa for being here today and for anyone else out there watching this right now whether you're listening to the playback uh, obviously the podcast will be available on all the major platforms and this will be live on my Facebook the video will be there on my YouTube and also LinkedIn seemed to have failed today for some reason maybe because I haven't used the live for a while but uh, I will eventually get it up there as well and I just want to say thank you again Shilpa it's been a pleasure and we'll see you soon very very soon thank you very much thank you Amit all right, stay on with me. I'll end the live now. Ciao, everyone. Take care. Bye.